Now in news from New Zealand, a jury has convicted South African national Lauren Dickerson of the murder of her three children. The majority verdict was delivered in the High Court in Christchurch earlier today. During the trial, her lawyers and family argued that she was severely troubled and in the throes of postpartum depression. The judge also agreed that she was mentally unwell. The 42-year-old doctor from Pretoria now faces life in prison for each of the murders. The moment a mother is found guilty of murdering her three daughters. Do 11 of you find the defendant, Lauren Ann Dickerson, guilty of murder? Or do you find the defendant, Lauren Ann Dickerson, not guilty of murder? Guilty of murder. Lauren Dickerson now faces a life sentence for the murder of each of her children, six-year-old Liane and two-year-old twins Maya and Carla. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel and thank you very much for joining me here again today. Last week we spoke about the case of Kervin Fortain where his life was taken by someone who had a lot of hate and anger in them and sadly someone with a lot to give was lost. And if you haven't seen that case I'll link it up here for you. But for today's video we actually have an update video on a case that has recently had quite a lot of updates to it on the case of Lauren Dickinson. And when we did the first video I felt like we had a lot of questions about her guilt. There were a lot of things to unpack in that video and with today's video we have a lot of updates, a lot of what happened in trial and I feel like a lot of people will be on the fence about her reasons behind doing what she did and the reason for her defense. But with that being said, let's get into today's case. Intended for mature audiences only. So firstly, we definitely need to recap and like I said, we have done a video on this before. And if you want to watch the full video and a much more lengthy one, then I will link it up here for you. But with that being said, Lauren Dickerson was a hospital doctor who recently moved to New Zealand from South Africa in 2021. Lauren's husband, Graham Dickerson, was an orthopedic surgeon at the time. And their three children, Leon, who was six, and their twin daughters, Maya and Carla, were two at the time. And we all know how stressful lockdown was. There was a lot of uncertainty, but the Dickersons had been planning to move for a long time and they had been planning to emigrate to New Zealand. So when they emigrated, it was lockdown protocols they had to follow. They had to take three young children over, all under the age of seven at the time. They also had to take themselves over, organize everything, organize new jobs, organize a place to stay, go into quarantine. So it was a lot that the two had to handle together when first moving over. During Graham and Lauren's time in New Zealand, Graham would say that he did notice that Lauren was acting slightly differently, he knew that she was not mentally okay at the time that they had first emigrated and that she was suffering from postpartum depression. In some articles that we mentioned in the previous video, apparently Lauren was on medication for this in South Africa but chose to stop taking it allegedly when she moved to New Zealand because New Zealand has very strict healthcare laws. So when applying, she left it off of her application because she didn't want to risk anything in being able to move over with her family to New Zealand. And with a lot of articles that I read, a lot of people said that she was struggling with her mental health at the time and it was very bad. Her husband knew, her friends knew, her parents knew and a lot of her colleagues knew as well. But Lauren put on a very brave face. She put on that she would just handle it and apparently to everyone it looked like she was suffering a little bit but it also looked like she was able to handle it. But they did mention quite a few times in the articles that at the time of the incident she was in a very dark place. So just a couple of weeks after the Dickersons arrived in New Zealand, tragedy struck and it was really an horrific sight. This all took place on the 16th of September 2021. Graham was at a work dinner with his colleagues and when he arrived home, he arrived home to the unthinkable. The Crown say that on the evening of the 16th of September 2021 in Timaru, Leonie Dickerson, age six, and twins Maya and Carla Dickerson, age two, died. Now they were asphyxiated by way of cable ties being applied uh, to the neck and, and the person responsible for that was their mother, Lauren Dickerson, a recent immigrant uh, to uh, New Zealand from South Africa. Now when they failed uh, to die by way of the cable ties uh, being applied to their neck, the Crown say that the defendant smothered 
the girls with their blankets before she made an attempt on her own life. And once Lauren allegedly suffocated all three children, she then tucked the children all back into their bed, put the blankets over their head neatly, and then went into another room to try and take her own life. When Graham arrived, he walked into the house where Lauren was in an absolute state. He thought that she was actually having another episode where she was going through a very bad bout of depression. So he rushed over her to check that she was all right. But obviously she wasn't. He then went into the other rooms. He noticed his children. He then called an ambulance immediately. The ambulance arrived. They tried to resuscitate all of the children. But sadly, it was way too late. So they then took Lauren Dickerson to hospital to try and treat her. But that is a very surmised version. And like I said, if you want to watch the whole video, I'll link it up here for you. But Lauren left absolute carnage in her wake of what she did to the children. And people could not really understand why she did it. Yes, they knew that she was struggling mentally. Yes, her colleagues knew. They saw her every day. Her husband knew. But they really didn't think that she was capable of doing such an horrendous crime. So then, on the 17th of July, 2023, Lauren Diggerson's trial began and it lasted for around four weeks. During the trial, a lot was brought up and poked holes in Lauren's mental illness defense. I do just want to mention that even though an outcome has been found for this trial, I don't think that the case is as clear cut as we think it is and there are a lot of grey areas. And I think that the truth is somewhere in the middle with this case. But during Lauren's trial, she pleaded not guilty to the murder of her three children based on her defense of mental illness and she said that she had no idea what she was doing at the time. Her defense brought forward often that she was a mom and that she was very overwhelmed by it all. Having moved overseas, having started a new job, having three children under seven at the time, and having to deal with her mental illness. Her defense stated that she loved her children and that she and Graham wanted to have children so badly but struggled to conceive, and that Lauren went through over 17 rounds of IVF in total in order to have her children. And after many rounds of IVF, Leon arrived on the 22nd of September 2014. But the couple wanted more children, but the couple then decided to take on egg donors, which then resulted in them having twins, Maya and Carla. However, according to Lauren Dickerson's defense, this was only part of the struggle because both Graham and Lauren both lost a baby in 2013, where Lauren sadly lost her baby at 22 weeks. So yes, Lauren was struggling with a lot and apparently after she lost her first baby, that was when Lauren's mental health started to go down quite quickly. But the reality of moving during lockdown restrictions having three children under the age of seven. This was really difficult for Lauren and apparently a lot of people said that she felt like she was very overwhelmed. She really wanted her children to be very cookie cutter and to behave a certain way and she really struggled with them just being so unpredictable. And just before the murders took place in September of 2021, she was caught saying, quote, if I could just give them back and start over, end quote. Another part of Lauren's defense would say that Lauren as a child would have this overwhelming sensation of always trying to be perfect, always striving for perfectionism, and she demanded high standards of herself and of those in her immediate family as well. And if Lauren didn't meet the standards that she set for herself, she would be incredibly critical and very harsh on herself. And she often would say that she just could not handle the unpredictable ways and how children just behaved however they wanted to. And she said that she just couldn't comprehend how children behaved like this when she needed to control everything. So Lauren was feeling very overwhelmed and just wanted a break, according to the defense. But the Crown Court or the prosecution didn't exactly buy this. Graham knew that his wife was not in a good place mentally, but he never felt that she could murder their children. He said yes, that Lauren loved organization and she really wanted to make sure that all was in order. But he said that she was never nurturing to the children, allegedly. Graham also said that Lauren apparently always second-guessed herself about whether she was good enough to be their mom. And Graham constantly had to reassure her that yes, she was a great mother and she could definitely do it. And apparently it's something that he does regret today. The Dickerson family was very religious and prior to the murders, Lauren did speak to their priest to say that she felt like there was a devil on her shoulder and that it was telling her to do bad things. She also said to a psychiatrist later on in the trial that she no longer felt any connection to God and that she feels completely alone. 
But when we take a look at Lauren's phone and the messages she sent to a lot of friends, this really puts a lot of holes in Lauren's mental illness defense. In the course of the investigation, the defendant's cell phone was seized and her messaging was analyzed. And that messaging, the Crown say, is a snapshot into what was running through Ms. Dickerson's mind. She messaged a friend and said, I'm going to start Leonie on Augmentin, which is antibiotics, tonight. She woke me up until 3 a.m. this morning, but I sent her to school, otherwise I would strangle her. She moans all the time, kicked me out of bed while I wanted to comfort her, was just in tears. After uh, some further lockdown um, notifications from the South African government in July, she sends a message to another one of her friends. I can't anymore. I'm afraid I'm going to take out my whole family if they announce this tonight. Then again in September, Maya received the three smacks on her nappy today and sat in the naughty corner. After that, she was well behaved and sweet as honey. So discipline is not necessarily a bad thing at their age. They know they are sometimes little so those texts are really not great and it really seals a nail in the coffin for the prosecution. However, there is a law in New Zealand that states that if a mother or father murders any of their children or child, which is under the age of 10, allegedly, if they claim that it is because of a mental illness or a mental illness struggle, apparently if they are found guilty and because of the mental illness, they can only be sentenced to a maximum of three years. And this is really what the defense were fighting for because of Lauren Dickinson's mental illness struggles. But the jury and the Crown Court felt that this was not a good defense and they did end up finding her guilty for the murders of her three children. And they found that she was not able to get the three-year sentence because they felt that her mental illness defense was not that strong and they felt that she didn't do it solely based on mental illness. She was not someone who snapped in anger. She was not an abusive mother. The prosecutor said she was responding to the behaviour of the children at the time and she snapped. But I suggest that you know that's not what happened. Members of the jury, I suggest that this awful event would never have happened if Lauren Dickerson was not depressed. And if she'd only been treated for her depression, things might have been different. The Crown say she wasn't so unwell that she has a medical defence available to her. On the contrary, the Crown say that on the 16th, of the September. Her actions are actually explained by two primary drivers. Her anger at her children's behaviour and her need for control. Now in that moment, that isolated moment, there was a loss of control in the context of the situation that she found herself in. Undoubtedly, the depression affected her judgment and her decision-making in that moment, but not to such a degree that she was unable to understand that her actions were morally wrong. And before Lauren was found guilty, these were the closing remarks of the prosecution and the defence. The judge sentenced Lauren Dickerson to a hospital stay where Lauren will then need to be assessed, and once she comes out of her assessment, they will then determine her sentencing but it is likely that Lauren Dickerson will face three counts of murder and a life sentence for each count. But that is the update to this case and I feel like I still feel uncertain about her defense. Don't get me wrong, I do know that she murdered her children and she needs to pay the time for her crimes. But in my head, I'm wondering if she had maybe got the help that she needed if maybe laws weren't so strict about foreigners coming in to get medication from the health system, maybe she would have been able to get the medication that she needed in order to not do what she did. But then another part of me says that she was a medical doctor. She knew exactly what she was doing going off of that medication. So would she have done it anyway, being on medication or not? But let me know what you think of this case down below. I hope you all have a fantastic week further and I'll see you again next week. Bye. Thank you.